Hi, this is David Gawley from Pentagon Solutions and I'd like to take a look at a more detailed presentation in Autodesk Revit Architecture 2012. Uh, this will be done over a series of videos in YouTube. Um, you can see I've got the outline of my structural grid and if I go to one of my elevation views in here I've got my various levels actually defined within Revit. Now typically we could do this through shared coordinates but I'm going to, um, for the sake of this presentation, have this within the same file. So I've got my top of pallet cap, top of foundation, finished floor level, top of steel etc in here. So the first area I'm going to go to is we're going to go to my top of pallet cap. Um, so I'm going to click on here, top PC, and I'm going to add in my grid. When I'm adding my grid, I'm going to do this by picking lines and we'll create an offset of 5,000 or 5 meters from the existing grid line. You'll see that automatic, Revit automatically knows to go A, B, C, D. It's picking up from the previous uh, grid line. Um, very easily in here, I'm going to actually just draw a manual arc grid line. So I'm going to go to grid, we'll draw an arc, we'll create an arc between B and E. And we'll pop that out. Again, I can use the wee jog tool so we can actually click on the wee jog to break that grid line out like so. Any of the grid lines, I can stretch them out and change the actual position of them as well. Um, you can see in here that if I actually want to make these equal, I can click on the equality symbol and it'll actually give me equal spacing along here um, over the 29097 um, millimeters. Okay, so I'm ready to add in. Um, some of my foundation work and some of my structural members in here. So I'm going to go to structure. I'm going to add an isolated uh, foundation. I've got one that's already loaded. I'm going to create this at grid points and I'm just going to window all my grid points and finish that out. Uh, you'll notice that I get a soft warning on the screen. It's basically indicating that it cannot view these. So let's take a quick look at the 3D view. So you can see there's my um, isolated foundations but I don't get to see them in plan and this is really to do with the um, display range or the view range in here. If I edit my view range um, I can make the level of depth from my view minus 100 so it's going to look 100 mil down from that level and suddenly you'll see that my pile caps actually um, appear in here. Okay let's close out of any hidden views so we'll go to view, we'll go to close hidden I'm going to pop up the 3D view and I'm going to type in WT to window tile these vertically. Okay, so we're going to add in structural columns now. So um, in this instance, I'm just going to run them from the top of the uh, foundation right up to the parapet. Um, again, I could break them at um, set splice points, but I'm just for the presentation, I'm going to keep it simple. So we'll look at structural column. Um, we're going to place this at grids, but we're going to say it's taking it up the parapet, top of steel. Going to do grid points, select all my grid points, and hit finish. I'm not going to add any tag in this case. Okay, so next I want to have a look at my ground beam member. So I've got some ground beam supports that's run along these pile caps. So again, what we can do in here is I'm going to go to beam. The particular concrete beam or ground beam isn't listed, so I'm going to edit an existing style or, and um, we're going to duplicate this out and call it 450 by 450 millimeters. All I do is simply type in the breadth and the um, height, 450 by 450, and hit OK. Now I'm ready to do this. We can create these on grid lines. So I'm going to say let's specify these in the grid lines. I'm going to pick up my grid lines that I want. Um, again, I can use my control key, which I'm using at the minute, or I can window the whole lot. Um, this will tie in nicely to my existing concrete, if I have the concrete material actually specified. And again, you can see the tag coming in. When I'm ready, I just click the tick to say that I'm actually finished. And give it a second to calculate, and my ground beams will physically come in. Okay, now my ground beams are in. I'm going to show you how you can manually put one in as an arc. So again, I'm going to go into beam. I'm going to select um, arc um, from my first point, to my second point, to my third point, and put it in. Again, it's going to tie up quite nicely along the pallet cups, caps, and you can see the join physically in there. And that's quite important um, uh, as part of the model builds. 
Next we're going to have with steel members. Um, so I'm going to go into my steel for my various floors. So let's have a look at top steel for first floor. Again, I'll just pop this over in the view. And we're going to go to beam. I'm going to change my beam member to my 305. In fact, I'll make us a 254 member. And again, at this stage, I'm going to do this on grids. I'm going to window up all my grids. I'm just going to remove these two curves here uh, once they're in, and I'm going to hit finish. So my steel members in, like so. Two curves that need to be added manually here, but I'm going to delete this these out because this is going to be a curtain wall area. Okay, to copy those up to um, the appropriate levels, I can select one steel member, right click, and go uh, select all instances in the entire project. And it's going to be fine for the entire project because I only have these beams in at this level. I'm going to copy those, copy the clipboard, and then we can paste these to selected levels. So I'm keeping this quite simplistic for this presentation. So I want to take this into power pit top of steel and I want to take this into my second floor top of steel by using my control key uh, to select those and hit OK. And again, giving it a second to actually physically calculate the members in there. So again, you can see um, my primary secondary steel members are actually coming in. If I had to add in the likes of beam systems in here, we could do this quite straightforward or quite easily in here. Um, again, we might want to load a particular beam member from the library. Uh, so we can go to beam. Uh, we can go to load family. I can look for my UK catalog library. Go to structural, framing and steel. And I can browse down and have a look at all the different steel members that I want to use. I want to use universal beams. And if I head open, I can see my full British steel uh, member catalog. And I'm just going to load up a 127 member for bracing. Okay, so that's physically loaded the family within the model. I can either start putting the member in, but I'm going to be a bit smart about it and add in a beam system. So on my beam system, I'm going to constrain the 3D, so as any of the supports move, um, the beam system will tie into it. I'm going to set a fixed number of 3. And again, I'm going to specify the member is the 127 member we have loaded in. So as you can see, I can hover over various points on my bays and I'll add the steel members in. So I'm only going to do this for a few um, but we'll come back to this later on when we need to do any uh, lift areas and how we can add in manual um, beams. So again you can get to see this in my model just at this point down here. So there's my beam systems. Okay, so now we'll put the main structural frame in, we'll put the foundation in here, um, I'm going to add a footing all around the building. So I'm going to pop out of these views, and we're going to go to my top of uh, foundation. Again, I'm going to go back in and window tile these elements, and I want the top of my foundation to come down to the top of my pile cap in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my wall, let's call it structural wall, We'll pick up my footing, which is my 750mm, and you can see it's operational by depth, so the depth that I want to take it down to is my top of the pile cap. I'm going to base this on a wall centre line, I'm simply going to do a rectangle. Um, from my rectangle I'm going to zoom in to the grid line, as shown, and I'm just going to pull down and do it to this point here. Pick it to the midpoint again of the actual structural grid. Give it a second to calculate. Once it's calculated, I'm going to zoom back out and manually put some um, uh, foundations in. Okay, so let's add some walls in here again. What we could do in here is we could do it by wall, add our structural wall in again, it'll pick up the same properties. We could simply do this by pick lines, and um, it will extend past. Uh, on the actual grid line itself, but that's fine. We can use the various tools so very easily we can use the grip to drag that down. It's a nice wee feature in Revit, but um, many commands that you'd be used to in more traditional CAD packages such as trim um, exist within the pro product. So if I zoom towards the bottom, you see that grip edits worked. Um, I might just want to use the trim command, so I'll go to trim, pick my cutting boundary and the side that I want to keep, and it'll trim that up. 
Again, I'm going to select that wall. I could do an array or various different editing options. I'm simply going to go to copy, and we're going to copy this at multiple intervals, as shown. So we're just going to copy this at multiple intervals going across. So this is a more in-depth presentation. Some of my other videos on YouTube um, might show more simplistic ones. So this is giving you an idea of modeling um, more detailed here. Um, and obviously if I was a structural engineer, I would be referencing these probably in as link files. Okay, let's add in this um, arc area. So we'll go back into our wall. We'll do this by arc. First point again, second point, third point. It's similar as our beam members and a ladder footing in. Okay, so now I'm ready to add in um, my cladding or my curtain wall or my wall system actually going around this member. So my wall member going around this is actually going to be a cladded system and um, I'm going to still stay on top of foundation so I want it to go from top of foundation up to my parapet. So in this case I'm going to go to wall and I'm going to pick my rain screen detail in here and this would be for where I have my block and I might have some uh, cladding uh, or rain screen or around the outskirts. So I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to base it on center line, but I'm going to make it an offset of 100 mil because it's quite important that the, my um, structural members remain within the cavity. Um, so you can see in here when I actually pick my first point, I'm just going to generically trace around, and you can see if I zoom in, my structural member or um, is within the cavity, and that's exactly what I want. So you don't necessarily have to always pick lines. I can add an arc on and the fly in here, very similar to what we did earlier on pick the end point and then pick the curve point and then we can change those members later on and I can go back to just drawing. So we manually can put points in, we can specify distances etc in there and um, we can dimension this early on and constrain the dimensions but I'm just simply tracing around the outline. Um, I've made a bit of a mistake putting this in Okay, so I've actually not tied it in, so very simply in my 3D view, I'm going to hover over and hit the tab key, picks up on my walls and left click, and to make sure it's constrained in the right level, I'm going to set it from top of foundation, and rather than being unconnected, I'm going to say let's take that up the parapet, and hit apply. So you'll see this will fully update there. So I've got my parapet, um, up to my parapet level detail, and I've got all my steel members in. Okay, next area I want to look at is actually putting in my floor slab. So for this, I'm going to go into my floor. So we'll take this into finish floor level ground. And I'm just going to add in a normal floor. So we'll take it to floor. I've got, I'll pick the type of floor that I want. So in this case, I'm going to say it's um, ground buried concrete. And I'm going to tab over the inner structure of the wall, hit my tab key and left click, and it's going to ask me a question. So as soon as I hit finish, it's going to ask, do I want the roof and floor overlaps? Do you would like to join the geometry and make a cut? I'm going to say yes, and you'll see the importance of this in a second. So, so you can see what I actually did in there. If I create a quick section through this, and double click, Let's pop that out to 1 to 50, make it a fine level of detail. You can see physically what it's doing. It's doing a cutout on the geometry. Now, I'll need to tidy that up and maybe change my type of slab in there so I can do that very easily by just actually picking it from the list. You can see my geometry is physically cut out. Now, if I need to copy that, so we could simply um, copy this slab out. We could paste it, align the selected levels. So we could pick up, say, our first floor, finished floor level, and hit OK. You can see in here that we can very easily, again, change our type of floor slab. So again, let's change that. So we could get to the one that actually ties in, but you can see where it's not cut out. Um, and physically what you can do here to make that um, cut out is you can edit the boundary. Now it will ask me to edit in an appropriate plan. That's fine. All I'm doing is taking it to that view to hit finish to get asked the question again. I want to pop back into my section you'll see you get the cut as expected. Again what we can do is we can actually get these elements out and um, 
and we can copy them up. So I'm just going to go to copy. I'm going to paste that to level. Let's paste that up to our second floor. And again, we can edit that up so we can edit the boundary. We could open it in a view and we can finish it out. To get asked the cut question, I'm just going to cut it. And again, all the floor slabs we can change. That's a change in one view is represented by a change in all views. We can change the type of uh, slab as well very, very easily. So, very quickly, I've modeled up my uh, floor slab. I've looked at the physical structural elements in there and actually got the basis of the external envelope for my building. Over the coming videos, you'll see how to actually um, expand this and take a bit further. Look at the roof detail, look at curtain wall systems, and um, say if this was um, a hotel design, how they actually use groups to um, make Revit more efficient. Um, thanks for listening, and check the next video.